Well, hello and welcome. My name's John West. Now I want to talk about the blood vessels. And here's a beautiful uh, picture showing a cast of the airways on this side, this is the right lung here, and the cast of the blood vessels on this side here. And uh, the blood vessels in, in this particular cast, the pulmonary artery is shown in red here. That's what he chose to use for the color of the pulmonary artery. And you can see the pulmonary veins in blue. And you can get a general feeling that the, the pulmonary blood vessels branch in roughly the same way as the airways do. Airways branch, as we've seen many, many times until you get to the alveoli, and is the same as the true of same is true of the blood vessels. In fact, as I've said before, the small pulmonary arteries tend to uh, run alongside the airways until we get down to the respiratory zone. Now the next slide shows a small pulmonary artery on the left here, and alongside it is a systemic artery. That's a, an artery from the the uh, rest of the circulation, say from an arm or a leg or somewhere, and uh, they have about, about the same caliber. Actually, this one is slightly smaller than this, but you'll notice that the walls are completely different. Uh, the small pulmonary artery here has rather thin walls, as you can see. This is cut diagonally here and makes it look a bit thicker, but they've got very thin walls, whereas the systemic artery has a very thick wall. A lot, of smooth, a lot of smooth muscle here, small amount here. Why the difference? Because the pulmonary arterial system, the pulmonary vascular system, is a very low pressure system. The pressures in the pulmonary artery are only about an eighth or so of those in the large systemic arteries, and so there's a very big difference between the two. Now, as we go down, let's follow the arteri arteries down, and here we come to uh, a smaller pulmonary artery. We can see the smooth muscle in the wall here. Red blood cells, of course, in the lumen. The alveoli around it here. And that is, uh, has its accompanying bronchus here uh, with smooth muscle in the wall. So the, the smaller pulmonary arteries have small amounts of smooth muscle and actually it's rather patchy. There's nothing in the pulmonary arterial system which is like the systemic system where the small arteries have very th uh, lots of smooth muscle on the walls and they act as throttles, uh, that's, that's not the case in the pulmonary vascular system. And then if we get down to the alveoli that we've seen now a couple of times before, the capillaries in the wall and the blood gas barrier here. Now, if we look at the capillaries in the alveolar wall, face on as it were, and let's imagine that we're in an alveolus and we're looking at the wall of the alveolus, just as I'm in a room and I'm looking at the wall of the room, that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the, the, uh, the alveolar wall face on and you can see that the capillaries form a very intricate network of capillary segments. And so some people object to calling these capillaries uh, tubes or pipes. They, they think it's, they're, they're, they're so, they're, they form this very intricate network. And we can see that even better if we go to uh, another type of lung. This is a frog lung, an amphibian. There's a, quite big differences between uh, the lung of a frog and the lung of a mammal, like a human. But nevertheless, we got a very good view of the capillary segment here. Is the artery over here, the vein here. And you can see this very dense arrangement in, of the capillary network. So much so that some physiologists don't like to talk about uh, flow in individual capillaries. They talk about a sheet flow. And, and an analogy is an underground parking garage where all the air in the garage would be blood and you've got posts separating the two sides uh, of, the, uh, of the sheet of blood from time to time. So that's one way of looking at this. Now here's a, a drawing showing blood from the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery is shown in blue here. Notice that it's accompanying the small airway down here to the respiratory region. The blood probably traverses two or three or four alveoli between the end of the pulmonary artery, where it branches into the capillaries, uh, and where it's picked up and taken away in a pulmonary vein. 
And again, what the artist has shown is the small pulmonary artery in the center of the asinus here and the pulmonary vein running back along the outside, as we've seen before. Uh, let's have a look at a small pulmonary vein, and that's shown here. Now, how do I know it's a vein? Well, the best way of knowing it is that it's not accompanied by an airway. It's actually very difficult to distinguish a small pulmonary vein from a small, small pulmonary artery. They both have very thin walls, as this one does. There's a very small amount of smooth muscle in the wall here. I can see a little bit here, very little. Uh, and you can see the red blood cells inside the pulmonary vein. And again, you can see how closely the alveoli are applied to the vein. And so it's not a surprise that as you expand the lung and you increase the tension in the alveolar walls, you tend to increase the caliber of the pulmonary veins as you do the arteries. One of the features of this micrograph is that we can see, not easily, but if you look carefully, you can see a potential perivascular space in the uh, outside the vein here. Uh, that's important because it's really a potential space, a virtual space, if you like, under normal conditions. But if there is edema of the lung, in other words, if fluid comes out of the capillaries uh, under some conditions, when you raise the capillary pressure, for example, it moves along and collects in these perivascular spaces around the small veins and around the arteries. And you get a cuff of fluid, uh, as we'll see in a, a later lecture when we talk about pulmonary edema. So that's an important feature of uh, these blood vessels. They have a, as it were, a sump, a perivascular region here, which can fill with fluid under certain conditions. Now I've been talking about the pulmonary circulation, but I should emphasize that there is a second circulation of the lung. It's called the bronchial circulation, and it's very much smaller than the pulmonary circulation. Of course, the pulmonary circulation takes the whole of the cardiac output. The whole of the output of the right heart goes through the lung, just as the whole of the output of the left, heart, of the left ventricle, the left heart, goes through the rest of the body. And uh, these two circulations are in series. So the, the blood flow through the lung is very large. It's something like five liters a minute, an enormous amount of blood flow, which is necessary in order to oxygenate the blood. But there's also another circulation shown here. Here's a bronchial artery, not easy to see, bronchial artery coming off the aorta. Sometimes they come off the intercostal arteries. And these bronchial arteries supply the larger airways, the airways down to the respiratory portion of the lung. Of course, the respiratory zone doesn't need any bronchial circulation. It's got uh, plenty of blood from the pulmonary circulation. But the larger airways uh, do not see the pulmonary circulation, and, and therefore they need a small amount of blood from the bronchial arteries to nourish them. And we should Bear in mind that there is a second circulation because it becomes important under some conditions. So let's summarize some of the most important points we've made. We took an imaginary swim down the blood vessels and we saw that the pulmonary arterial system is a series of branching tubes, very like the airways. In fact, the arteries accompany the airways down to the gas exchanging area. We saw that the, the walls of the arteries are much thinner in, on the pulmonary circulation than the systemic circulation because the pressures are so much less. The capillaries form a very dense network of interconnected segments in the alveolar walls, so this is very efficient for gas exchange. We also noted that the small veins have a perivascular space or perhaps a potential perivascular space. And the same thing is true of the arteries as well. And finally, we just mentioned briefly the bronchial circulation. It's a very, very small part. It's, it's only a fraction of the, of the pulmonary circulation, but it's important because it is responsible for the nutrition of the large airways down to the gas exchanging regions. So that's the end of our discussion.